On my way back to my old office, I would often pass by this gas station with a dinosaur as its logo. The station is named Sinclair, which isn't super popular around here in Southern California, but when I saw it, I sort of fell in love with their logo, the fonts, the colors, and of course, the dinosaur. Then it caught me thinking, why don't other oil companies use dinosaurs as their logo? I mean, it's perfect, right? Oil comes from dead dinosaurs, fossil fuels and all that. So why isn't anyone else using it? And that led me down a really deep rabbit hole about the history of this company, Sinclair Oil, and how their wonderful mascot, Dino, transformed our public's understanding of where oil comes from. Founded in 1916 by Harry Sinclair, the Sinclair Oil Company became a household name in the late 20s. Then in 1930, when the U.S. was struggling with Great Depression, their marketing team came up with a really clever idea to use dinosaurs in their marketing. I mean, after all, that's where oil comes from, right? dead dinosaurs. And when they started, they used all kinds of dinosaurs like T-Rex and Triceratops. But the one that people really loved, the one that really kind of became an icon was the gentle green Brontosaurus. Yes, I went and bought one just for this video and it was quite expensive. So, you know, consider a like down below, <laughs> maybe just fund this project. And as an aside, is the Brontosaurus not the most beloved dinosaur ever? I mean, even as a kid, my favorite movie was Jurassic Park and they had in it this fun-loving herbivore that would just play tug of war with you if you happen to be sitting in a tree stranded there. <laughs> Now, Dinosaur Walks Among You probably noticed, and also if you can just read the title of that video, that that's not a brontosaurus. In fact, that's a brachiosaurus. And that's kind of the point of this video, but we'll get to that in a second because Dino became a beloved part of American culture all the way back starting in the 1930s at the Chicago World's Fair. This is really what made Dino a household name. And at that time, a life-size dino appeared in the Century of Progress at the Chicago World's Fair, along with several other dinosaurs built by P.G. Allen, who is known for creating lifelike paper machés for motion pictures. And if you've seen Toy Story, you probably recognize Dino as well as one of the toys that Andy had. And this also continued all the way up to the 1964 World's Fair, where they had this exhibit called Dino Land. Sinclair Dino Land. These are a few of the millions of car-owning, traveling Americans who will be telling their friends about the fair. Our own Dino. On formal occasions, he's called Brontosaurus. Big fella, isn't he? 70 feet long. Tips the scales at a substantial 35 tons, which makes him about the right size for a company like ours. They even had a machine that would make plastic molds of Bronto in front of your eyes, like right there and then. And it's kind of fascinating because we're talking in the early 60s here. I mean, this is something that would be kind of cool even today. They even came out with a book called the Sinclair Dinosaur Book, and it was authored by famous dinosaur hunter Barnum Brown, who was the guy that discovered the first ever T-Rex. So kind of a big deal. And having a real paleontologist put their name behind something from a marketing standpoint gives it a lot of credibility, and especially in that era where fake news and the internet and stuff didn't exist. Like today, you can see that stuff everywhere and you kind of always have a, a skeptical eye with your when you're looking at it. But back then, people didn't think of it that way. If this paleontologist who discovered the T-Rex said this was legit, it's legit. People absolutely would believe it. And they even came up with this dinosaur stamp album where kids could visit a Sinclair gas station each week to collect a new dinosaur stamp and learning a fun fact about dinosaurs along the way. Again, connecting dinosaurs with oil, right? They're, they're sort of explicitly telling us that their oil comes from dinosaurs, despite actually some of their other marketing making it clear that oil was made during the age of the dinosaurs, not that it came from dinosaurs, but it didn't matter. And then fast forward to the 1970s, and there's this gigantic floating dino balloon as a part of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. People loved it. And in 1975, that balloon was named an honorary member of the American Museum of Natural History. You know, the place where real discoveries are exhibited, not marketing campaigns by oil companies. That's how much people love this. And maybe some of you, if you're on the, the boomer side of the generation spectrum, you might remember growing up with Dino as a toy and just seeing him everywhere because it really was just a part of American culture back then. So what's the big deal, right? Why even make this video? I mean, it just seems like a story about good marketing. But here's the issue. 
It turns out, and this was news to me, that oil doesn't come from dead dinosaurs. Huh? When we think of fossil fuels, it's not actual fossils like Dr. Grant dug up in Jurassic Park. It's an entirely different kind of fossil, one that is much, much older. Now, oil is indeed a fossil fuel, but not big, large fossils like T-Rex bones. It's a bit more mundane and also kind of more fascinating than that. Petroleum comes from countless trillions of tiny ancient organisms, primarily plankton and algae, not dinosaurs. But here's what really happened. Hundreds of millions of years ago, long before the first dinosaur ever lived, microscopic plankton bloomed in ancient oceans. Now, these tiny creatures and plants died, and they sank to the seafloor, and then were buried under layers of mud and sand. Over millions of years, those layers piled up, increasing heat and pressure, sort of cooking these organic remains into hydrocarbons, the molecules that make up crude oil and natural gas. Now, the oil slowly seeped into porous rock formations, pooling in reservoirs deep underground. And we're talking hundreds of millions of years here. So that far back, a lot of the land that we currently occupy was actually underwater. And in those ancient oceans, which are now land, lay these tiny carbon-intense fossils pooling and settling beneath our feet. They even called this the Carboniferous period. Now, the term Carboniferous comes from England in reference to the rich deposits of coal that occurred there. These deposits of coal occurred throughout Northern Europe, Asia, and Midwestern and Eastern North America. Now, this term might be unfamiliar to you because here in the United States, we, for whatever reason, didn't like it and renamed these periods the Mississippian and Pennsylvanian subsystems. We sort of have a trend of renaming things to be more Americanized that stems all the way back from then to continuing today. So when modern companies drill wells, they're tapping into these ancient geologic kitchens where this ancient creatures, the plankton and algae, have turned into what we now know as oil. Dinosaurs hardly enter the picture at all. In fact, most of Earth's oil formed from life in the oceans in the Mesozoic era and even earlier, whereas dinosaurs mostly lived on land and didn't contribute in any meaningful way to today's oil reserves. But the real problem here, and the reason I'm making this video, is just to highlight how misinformation in the media, or marketing in this case, can lead to things that aren't true just becoming sort of a public understanding, right? Most people, I bet if you walk down the street and ask them where oil comes from, they would say it comes from dead dinosaurs. And unfortunately, that's just not the truth. Although that seems sort of benign in this case, there are many more examples where that can lead to kind of real policy decisions and understandings that just are based on fake news. So this also brings up another more recent example where in the TV show Landman, they included some really bad misinformation about renewable energy and wind turbines specifically. Now I debunked that in this video over here. So go have a look if you haven't yet and consider becoming a member if you want to go backstage with me and find other stories like this and kind of dig deep into the reality of where all this stuff comes from. That's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you back here next time.